Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 53 of the Hoopercast. I am Mr. Hooper, and... Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, and, and that's how we're going to start the show today. Hello, Dustin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, I'm delicious. Michael Grayson, that's good how are you? you now that you're back on the podcast after a hiatus? You know, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here, guys. Oh, it's amazing having you back. Um, this episode of the podcast, at least on my end, is brought to you by Redbridge Gluten-Free Sorghum Beer. Wow. Very yeah, good. That I didn't, sounds fancy. I didn't seek it out, but I was just looking. I was like, does that say gluten-free beer? Yeah, I think and that's I, what I heard. Yeah, and I, wow. looked at, I looked at my wife, and I was like, I'm going to get mm. this. I'm curious. And it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Um, free, man. Yeah, so there's just like no wheat or barley, but um, it's, it's not bad. I thought it would taste really terrible. It doesn't I mean, af- taste af- really terrible? After I bought it, I thought it would taste really terrible, but so far it's uh, it's pretty solid. All right. Nice. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, not uh, not disappointed so far. What are you what are you drinking, Michael? Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Budweiser, King of Beers. <laughs> yeah, it comes in a twelve pack for twelve dollars. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing all right for myself over here, man. Nice. <laughs> well, well, that's good. Yeah. Wow, well, a smoothie. Yeah, oh. a smoothie. It has fruits. <laughs> fruits. <laughs> yep. So there you go. Fruits I've also got berries. water. Uh, mine has a shot of energy for oh, some for good. Ass. I know for real. Got to be healthy. Yeah. <laughs> be happy. Be healthy. Well, um. <laughs> anyway, also Cheerios. I had some mixed nuts earlier. Mixed good for nuts. you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Were you at a bar? <laughs> N- no, I went to a grocery store and got them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> enough about our health. So, for your health. Um, yes, <laughs> today, um, I guess today we, um, I just figured we'd catch up on some stuff we've been watching and uh, that you've been watching, Michael Grayson. You told me um, a few things that you've been, a few TV shows you've been checking out lately. So, what have you seen? All right. Well, uh, first thing, Melissa and I, the lady <clears> and I, <throat> we've been watching Workaholics. Mm-hmm. Now, guys, I'm telling you, that is some brilliant <laughs> writing there. <laughs> is it? It's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. But you know, you gotta awesome. keep in mind it it comes on at ten o'clock on a Wednesday night. So so at this point on a Wednesday night, you've already had you know a couple drinks. The girls <clears> already had a couple glasses of wine. You're sitting there. You're watching these guys do the most ridiculous things. Uh, this week, the guys dressed up as clowns. <laughs> they, just, they just took over the city. Awesome. <laughs> uh, do you guys do you guys watch Workaholics? Have you seen any of it? Have you seen any? I've seen none things? of it. None of it. None of it. I'm telling you, man, it's uh, it's something interesting to watch. Awesome. <laughs> it sure is. Um, after uh, after, after uh, Workaholics uh, comes on, there's a there's a new show called Broad City. Oh, okay. Um, now Amy Poehler, I think that's how you say her last name. Yeah. Um, you know, Leslie Nope from Parks and Recs is the executive producer mm-hmm. on this show. Yeah, I heard about this. I'm telling you, it is bad. It is so funny. It's it's bad in a good way. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm just telling you. What, awesome. what was it they did the other day? I, I can't even tell you. It's just so outlandish and far-fetched. <laughs> just the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's these two young ladies that live in New York City, and it is just hysterical. You know, all the uh, supporting characters in their story. Just, you know, they got this roommate. She she has a she has a girl as a roommate, but the girl is never there. But there's always this, like, fat, useless, bearded boyfriend always sitting in the house like half naked eating Cheetos just, you know it's just so real you know it's just it's awesome. absolutely hysterical so those are two things that are definitely worth a watch on Comedy Central on Wednesday yeah, yeah. night um, other than that awesome. you know Sunday night that's been reserved for The Walking Dead which yes you know we've, uh, we've had a really good time catching up on that 
Mm-hmm. We're, we're real impressed with uh, with season four so far. There have mm-hmm. been a couple of throwaway episodes, just like every yeah. season. But right. for the most part, we're enjoying it. Where are you guys at now? Are you caught up? Yeah, we're completely? caught up. Okay, cool. So, I still can't believe what they did to Herschel. I know. But uh, it's one of those things, man. It is. I I got to tell you, after after the big confrontation, um, I, I figured they went on hiatus. Um, for those of you who don't know, they go on hiatus. And they come back with the second half of the season. And I, I just figured, like, okay, I don't know where they're going to go now. They're all kind of split up. It's going to be kind of weird. But I've really enjoyed the, the second half, probably more than the first half so far. Just kind of getting these character-driven episodes. Absolutely. Where we get to, get to see a little bit of, like, Rick deal with Carl and, and just kind of the father-son dynamic there, you know, in this new, you know, world. And uh, a little bit with Michonne and, and, you know, just kind of get to know the characters a little bit. And, um... You know, you, you raise a good point. Um, there's been, I've heard so many mixed reviews about people's reactions to Carl's character development. Mm. Some yeah. people think that, you know, what he's doing is really great. He's stepping up, trying to be a man. And the mm. other people think, you know, he's just disrespecting his father and being a whiny little boy. Mm. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this? I think, this, this may sound strange, but I think Carl is one of the more interesting characters on the show. And, and the reason I think that is because there's such potential with his character to really explore how this world affects children. I mean, we know sort of how it would affect adults, but how, how you'd go through puberty and how you would, you know, be this, you know, 13-year-old kid in this world is really, like, an interesting concept to me. But, yeah, it's, it's a really, like, um, interesting... I forget my... I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Hooper. Um... <laughs> Well, it's a good uh, point you brought up about, you know, Carl going through puberty and Carl trying to figure out what it is he's doing. I mean, you look at last right, week, yeah. you look at last week's episode when mm. the whole episode was about Beth wanting to act like a grown woman because all she wanted was to get that drink. Right, right. I, I think you raise a good point um, with that. Yeah, one of, one of the things that I've always kind of thought the show should do more of is, you know, these character-driven pieces where we see how they have changed and how this world affects the normal aspects of life. Um, so to see, you know, Beth kind of say, like, you know, when Daryl says, why do you want to know what I did before the turn? And Beth is like, well, that's what people do. They talk about, you know, life before to yeah. feel normal. And I feel like that's a really valid point and something that the show doesn't do enough of, but I'm really glad that they're doing it now. And, um, I, you know, I just think this is a nice change of pace and, and, um, I, and, and it's great because as a, as a fan, you really don't know where it's going to go. I mean, next, next week could be anything. We could be looking at any character doing anything. And I think that's really, really cool place to be. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. I do have to tell you, I'm still thrilled that mm. Lori is dead. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Oh, uh, that's great. Oh, I know. People just really didn't like her, did they? No, no, no one liked her. Why, why? Why is it really? I mean, like it could have been. Was it? It wasn't the whole Shane thing, was it? I'm just sure. Oh, that was part of it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then she was always telling Rick what to do, and Rick was just always like, "I'm trying to help everyone survive." And then she would just <laughs> nag and nag and I know nag. for real. Lori, yeah. Lori, I'm trying my best to get everyone out of here alive. Carl is going to die if we don't get help. Genius. That's my That's best awesome. one. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I had a person tell me one time that I sounded like Rick, like I have the same <laughs> accent. And I didn't know whether to take that as a compliment because because it's a fake accent that he's doing. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a British guy. And I'm like, so yeah. I sound like a fake Southerner? Like, so... Coral. <laughs> Coral. <laughs> Coral, get in the house, Coral. Oh, man. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Uh, um, Michael, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot. You said you've also been watching MasterChef Junior. Oh, my God, yes, I've been watching MasterChef Junior. It's over now, but I watched the whole season. Um, you know, it was very, very impressive. Uh, as someone who absolutely loves to cook and loves to spend time in the kitchen, 
I was very impressed with what these six through twelve year olds were putting out. Um, they were mm. using techniques that you know your average. You know, I'm 24 year old male. Like I thought I knew how to you know cook up some cool stuff in the kitchen, and I'm mm-hmm. looking at these six years old, these six year olds, and they are making some really impressive dishes. So that's awesome. If you haven't checked out Master Chef Junior, that's definitely worth a watch. You see a whole different side of Gordon Ramsay. Most of the oh, time, yeah. when you see Gordon Ramsay, he's shouting and cursing and just you know saying terrible things, but when he is around children, man, he is a totally different individual. And it was really mm. heartwarming to see a different shot, a different side of, uh, yeah. of such a famous chef. Awesome. That's really cool. And is that on Hulu? Uh, you know, you know, I'm going to be honest. We watched it on the Comcast on demand. Okay. I um, so it's definitely, definitely worth a watch. It was very impressive. Awesome. Yeah. I, I saw that once or twice. Um, you know, at work, and um, I, I, it's just like you said, Michael, like, I'm expecting, like, some kid, like, did some souffle that turned out terribly, and I thought Gordon Ramsay was going to go, Brian, this souffle is fucking awful. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, like, and just, like, rip into him, but he, but he was, he actually is, like, constructive oh, like, I know. with them. I know, it's, it's weird. a totally different side of him. It was off-putting. Yeah, but... <laughs> That's a pun, by the way. I didn't realize that. Pudding. Pudding, everybody. Pudding. Pudding, pudding. Pudding. Yeah. It was just yes. this approachable side of Gordon Ramsay that I don't think anybody ever had ever witnessed. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of it was... like when you see Simon Cowell on a talk show and he's not just a mean son of a bitch. Yeah. It's, just, it's like, I don't know. He well, kind of always is, <laughs> you know. He's not maybe, as, yeah. Maybe they're the same person in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That might be it. Yeah. Um, my, Just put on a V-neck sweater and you become, or a V-neck t-shirt and you become yeah. Simon Cowell. Basically an undershirt. Yeah, pretty much. Lately. Yeah. Like, he used to wear, like, a black, like, you know, shirt all the time, and now he just wears, sure. like, an undershirt. He's just like, why buy shirts when I can just wear undershirts? <laughs> yeah, he just, went, he just went to Target and got a pack of Hanes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, five pack. <laughs> <laughs> With Michael Jordan on the cover of it. <laughs> there you go. Um... Well, um, I, I, this is not in the Google Doc, but um, I was retracing my steps, and I realized I had watched, um, w- this week I hadn't watched really any TV. I did watch another episode of True Detective, um, mm. and it continues to just be fantastic. Now, you um, gotta, you got to tell me about True Detective. I've, I've read people's Facebook statuses and stuff about it, but I haven't seen any advertising for it. I, I really... I, I, I watched an episode where South Park made fun of it, but but to that point, when <laughs> they called it investigative murder porn, I don't know too much about it. So what is it? Well, I, 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 I'm with you. I had not really seen any ads for it. Um, I saw like one trailer on Facebook or something. Like, I, mean, I think maybe a lot of it was just online. But um, it's it's a mini series. I've come to find out. It's not going to be like a continuous, you know, serialized drama. It's like eight episodes. And and done and um, it's got <clears throat> it's got Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson and they are two you know detectives. Well, um, I love two, both of those guys. Yeah, yeah, I they're, they're both great. And um, and it's basically just um, uh, I'm I'm on the sixth episode, so I guess I got two left. So I guess maybe does it end on Sunday? I need to really catch up for because you're at that point when you're when you're this far during through the show. But you're not like caught up, and someone spoils it. You know, like the context, possibly. You know, mm. what kind of like is it on? HBO. Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like if it's kind of like if someone spoiled the end of um, Breaking Bad, like what happens to like a tertiary character or something. You all <laughs> don't know. Don't spoil it for me. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> you, like if you had seen like only season one, you wouldn't maybe know a couple of the characters. But if you're on like. If you just finished season four, it's like, oh, well, I know who that guy is, and oh, you know. Um, right. My point is, um, it's it's basically just it's a show. It's uh, they're detectives, and they 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 investigated like this um this like weird like satanistic kind of murder or something, and then a couple other related related murders, and it's kind of supposed to span a couple of decades. Um, and there's um, I don't really know how else to describe it because um, without 
you know, giving you plot twist details and stuff. But uh, it's really good. It's really well shot. It's incredibly well acted, <clears throat> um, particularly by Matthew McConaughey, who is just obviously. I mean, you saw the Oscars. He's just on fire right you now. Know, He's in his prime. You know, can I uh, can I change the subject real quick to Matthew McConaughey? Yes. Sure. Did you fellas see a picture Matthew McConaughey did a little black comedy called Killer Joe? Yes. No, I didn't see that. That is definitely worth a watch. What did you think? I, I, it was, it was very interesting. Like again, like his his performance is just the main strength of it. Particularly that one that I know you know what I'm talking about um, with the the chicken wing, and yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that was incredibly disturbing and. <laughs> Dustin, yeah, it was. Dustin, you have got to uh, to <laughs> red box it or, or go pick yeah. it up at Walmart <clears throat> or something. Gotcha. It Basically, is... between movies like that and Mud, <clears throat> and what yeah. the, what's wrong with my throat? And um, and like Lincoln Lawyer and stuff like that. He's just been putting out like you know consistently great performance after consistently great performance yeah. for like you know six plus straight films, and now True yeah, Detective. Yeah, Mud was awesome. And that um, was awesome. And I, he's just he's just he's great, you know. Like he mm. he's he's been great. So I mean, True Detective is worth it just for him. And his character is like he's just like this completely nihilistic, you know, just at, you know completely like you know lacks all. He's just like a basically just like a, a passive sociopath. Just like yeah, you know, what's he? You know, he's the kind of guy who would tell you like, "Why are you eating that hot dog? You're just gonna shit it out later, and it's gonna mm-hmm. fertilize." You know, like why you why you bother even picking, you know, good food to eat? It doesn't matter. Like just someone where you're just like, okay, well, don't want to have a beer with you. Remind mm-hmm. me no. not to bring you to Sonic no. with me next time we're hungry. You know who I do want to have a beer with is Matthew McConaughey from Dazed and Confused. That's the <laughs> there Matthew McConaughey go. I want to hang out with. <laughs> It's just crazy to see him go from that guy, you know, know. like, just kind of like, yeah. essentially, like, not not like a malicious joke, but kind of just like a, oh, it's Matthew McConaughey, you know, Bongo's guy, you know, yeah. all right, all right, all right, and now he's a, he's an, he's an Academy Award winning actor. Yeah. Doing, doing very well for himself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible, you know, so... Yeah, so True Detective is just another testament to his talent, and so of well, course if you just if you like good acting, watch that show. You sold me, dude. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really good. Um, awesome. All right, well, Dustin, what, what, what have you been watching? Uh, honestly, I think we recorded what a week ago, Hooper. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen a whole lot that's really worth mentioning, um, but I will say that there are two shows um, that started back this week in the <laughs> second season. That I checked out, and um, they're sort of in the same vein because they're both based on um, movies that are based on books. Okay. Um, so the first is Bates Motel. Um, it's in its second season. Obviously, this is like the updated version of Psycho, and um, and then we also have Hannibal, which is on NBC, and um, is obviously the story of Hannibal Lecter. And you know, I don't. Did you guys ever watch any any of season one for either of these shows? No. Okay. Well, basically, you know, Bates Motel is sort of like a character-driven thing where um, it's all about how um, how Norman Bates became twisted and, you know, whatever, and um, into the, the character that we see in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, which is, you know, probably the best horror movie ever made, in my opinion. And and so, anyway, but... but um, it's a, it's a good show, and the first season's really entertaining. Um, but to me, you know, this this first episode back really was a, a kind of a low point because I feel like they they made this mistake of escalating his arc too quickly. Maybe because they didn't know that they'd have another season, and so now they've got to try to drag it back out. And and it's just sort of like a weird, you know, from a storytelling perspective, to do that to a character is really strange. Um, and similarly, they've they've done the same thing with Hannibal, in that throughout the first season of Hannibal, um, you know, the show is actually based on um, or centered around Will Graham, and um, played by Hugh Dancy and um, played by Edward Norton, I think, back in uh, Red Dragon. 
And um, so anyway, uh, uh, Will Graham, they kind of tell this story and um, Will Graham kind of loses his mind throughout the first season and becomes sort of insane. And you kind of like now it's like, well, where do you go with that character, though? And so it's sort of the same thing in that they told this this full arc in the first season. So now where do you go from here? What's the what's the defining arc from here on out? Um, you know, it's sort of like if Breaking Bad had sort of done a complete arc in its first season, there's really nowhere else to go. And um, so it's just kind of like both. So both of those shows, long way of saying both of those shows are kind of turning me off right now because I'm not sure where they're going or what they're doing. And um, it's just throwaway episode after throwaway episode. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly right. It's, and, and the performances are great. I mean, Mads Mikkelsen as Hannibal Lecter is great. And, and you have Vera Farmiga as, uh, as uh, Norman Bates' mother. Okay. Um, and these are great performances, but they're just, you know, it's just... It's pointless. It's, it's pointless. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just kind of like, okay, here's, here's doing, another episode it's doing just to no good give you something to watch. It's picture of the story. Exactly. And, and I hate to say that Breaking Bad kind of ruined me on television. <laughs> and, and I always, <laughs> I always compare to everything to Breaking Bad. <laughs> But it's kind of true, right? Like, Breaking Bad told a story over, uh, you know, its entire series. And, you know, without spoiling anything for you, Michael, the the story ends. I mean, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end, and that's it. And so it's sort of like each episode that you're watching is another chapter in the book. Whereas something like Bates Motel or Hannibal is kind of like, okay, but what does this have to do with the next chapter? And so... And, and I feel like a lot of a lot of shows like this kind of fall into that trap. Like if you're talking about something like you know Law and Order, CSI, Castle, you know Almost Human, whatever it is, it's House. just kind of like, yeah, it, yeah, it's <laughs> no, it's to, true. I had to throw that one out there. Is but it's true, and but they all they all do this thing where, okay, here's the story for this week, but but what's neglected is how that ties into a larger story. Correct. And and that kind of that kind of storytelling was great when television was new. That kind of storytelling was great ten years ago, but now it's just got to be at a different level. I mean, in a world post The Wire and Sopranos and Shield at uh, the Shield and and Breaking Bad, you just have to tell <laughs> something better. And, I'm totally uh, so anyway, there, there. There's my there's my television rant for for the day. Yeah. Valid. Yeah. <laughs> all right so, well, anything yeah. to add to that michael no I, I i agree with all of it i'm i'm tired of watching trash television yeah, yeah. you know you know i am impressed though because melissa and i will flip through we'll flip through channel after channel but you know what's always on what america's home videos America's uh, funniest home videos. Yes. They yes. still play that from like from the nineties. They're still going hard. And, yeah, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, this is like watching YouTube before YouTube yep. was invented. Yep, and I'm impressed. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, and 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 you have like an annoying host between each video. Oh, I know that guy's terrible. He's awful. Tom, Tom Bergeron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. But, see, he's so terrible. I didn't even know his name. See, my grandparents watch that, and they don't have the internet, so no. I feel like that's the audience. No, is the people that don't have internet connection. No, and then they and then they go to their friends and say, "Did you see that episode of Funnies last night?" And the, you know, it's like, what? See, I who feel does like, this? I mean? feel like the sh- the show Tosh Point oh kind of tries mm. to do what what America's Funniest Home Videos does, but the problem yeah. is, is that Tosh is just a total dick. He is. Uh, yeah. He's just. He's not even funny. He's just a dick. It's just off-putting. I know, I know. It's yeah. like you try to have a little bit of faith in humanity, but you can't do it because he is <laughs> so pessimistic. That's true. Yeah, he's got those like weird doll's eyes too, like those shark eyes. He does yeah. man? You know, I think you know, he's I, dead. I think about Tosh, and then I think about Dane Cook, and I'm like, how do either one of these people have a career? Yeah. <laughs> well, we haven't heard from Dane Cook in a while. Maybe he doesn't anymore. Yeah, I had not <laughs> heard from Dane Cook, but I was so done with him. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody's done with Dane Cook. 
Yeah, Dane Cook uh, kind of helped me get through high school, kind of. And then I was like, wait a minute. I don't need him. <laughs> what am I doing? Wait a minute, all these jokes were stolen from Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, at least Bill Cosby wore a sweater. I know, for real. They basically, um, so, oh, who was talking about it? Someone was talking about how, um, some other comedian was talking about how Dane Cook, essentially, like, all he really had to do, it, it, like, his, his stand-up is, like, 90% execution. Like, mm. all he had to do was, like, they said, all he does is, like, you know, he'll tell the joke, but then he'll, but then he'll say, but then he'll just make it so that when he says something like this, <laughs> you'll, you'll laugh. With an upward and it's like, they, they said, it's just, it's just like Pavlov's dog. Like, he just associated oh. that, that, that inflection with people laughing. Laughing, And it's yeah. worked. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, that's oh, true. smart. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we should call movie, him movie smart, but not funny. Oh, yes. I would like oh. to know, Michael Grayson, you saw an Oscar-nominated film, an Oscar-winning film. Right? Did I? I didn't watch the Oscars. <laughs> I don't know what won. Okay. Well, Gravity <laughs> won for something. So well, would you I like know, to? I know Gravity I'm pretty sure Gravity won a golden reel from the Motion Picture Sound Editors Award. For, uh, oh. for having best sound effects editing, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that's what they got. Don't don't quote me on that. But I, I I watched the film. Sandra Bullock was okay. George Clooney was amazing. The sound mm-hmm. design was to die for. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm really I'm really impressed. You know, you look at what Christopher Nolan did with uh, with Inception and mm-hmm. how they built a big hallway. You know, they yeah. built that big room and. They kind of did their whole zero gravity thing, and then, and then gravity comes out, and they do their zero gravity thing, and it is really impressive. Yeah, gravity uh, won for visual effects. That's okay. one of the awards it got. So, it, um, it won seven awards, in fact. Really? Uh, yes, it did. Three yeah, it did. Okay. Uh, cinematography, directing, film editing, uh, best achievement in music for the original score. Um, uh, sound editing, sound mixing, visual effects. Bam! Yeah, dude. I mean, basically, it was, it was all a good technical piece of awards. Work. Yeah, it was a great piece. It was a filmmaker's film. And then it was, yeah. Alfonso Cuarón got best director as well. Right. Yeah. So, no, although I got, I gotta say, I, I'm not, I'm not convinced that cinematography went to the right people. Who, who do you was, think? It, who were the non? Who were the nominees? Um. That's a good question. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Let me pull that up before I put my foot in my mouth. Uh, okay, so it was the Grandmaster, Gravity, Inside, Lewin Davis, Nebraska, and Prisoners. Okay. Um, you know, Gravity was great, but I believe most of it was animated. Like, yeah, yeah. They, I, they lit for, for the actors in the studio on green screen, but how much, you know real like traditional kind of cinematography was there in the film I, I mean you didn't hear it they had they had base camp set up on the uh, international space station with their uh, big old <laughs> panavision cameras up there in outer right. space there you go you know Sandra that'd be awesome Bullock. actually you know Sandra yeah. Bullock she, she's uh, she's a serious woman yeah <laughs> that'd be insane if they'd actually if they'd actually oh, filmed yeah. it in space that would have been wild that would be cool, man. I mean, because in there, like, I'm surprised there's not a category. There's two categories that I think we've talked about on the podcast, Dustin, that deserve mm-hmm. to be part of the Oscars. One of them, um, one of them is best blockbuster. I think you and I were talking about that. Was that you okay. and I, or was that just my head? I don't, I don't remember that, but okay, we could have we'll, at some point. We'll yeah. go with it. Sure. Okay, May, I feel stupid now. Um, the other, <laughs> the, the other one that I'm referring to is, uh, I feel like there should be best stunt coordinating. Yeah, I something like that. that. I mean, it, it, the thing is, it it can't apply across the board to every film. Like you don't do right. Nebraska is not going to win for best stunt coordinator. But at the same right. time, it's like, well, maybe you should have more stunts in your movie. Otherwise, <laughs> you'd be eligible for it. Maybe there should be some car chases in Nebraska, right? You know, oh, man. So if you want to get those speech awards, with with car chases, <laughs> the king's speech with car chases, or he just does one of his speeches like while walking a tightrope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Anyway. I want to see the Michael Bay version of the King's Speech. Oh, I want to man. see the Michael Bay version of every movie. I, well, honestly, <laughs> I'd rather including, not see Can you imagine seeing um, Gravity directed by Michael uh, Bay? That would be crazy. Oh, man. How, do you know that he'd be doing stuff with women's body parts and, and zero gravity? Oh, yeah. 
This is true. Oh, he would. He would. He would. And he'd have, like, frat parties in space. Yeah, Yeah, man. Yeah. Duh. Well, I I intend to see Gravity. Um, Oh, you haven't seen it? I have not seen it. Okay. Sandra Bullock does a lot of screaming. A lot. A lot. Prepare yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. And a lot of, like, frantic noises. I like those noises. I like the screams. (laughs) That's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Creeping me out. You owe me a scream. I, what? Who saw um, Who saw Saving Mr. Banks? Did you guys already talk about this one? We we um, have, but uh, I didn't see it. But Dustin, didn't you see it? No, I haven't seen it either. Oh, John yeah. saw it. Okay, John saw it. Yeah. Okay. Was it good? What'd you think? It wasn't the movie I thought I was going to go see. Really? <sighs> yeah, like I thought I was going to go see like a happy Mary Poppins, you know, making of Mary Poppins picture. And sure. it was this really depressing story of P. L. Travers's <laughs> life. Really, but but I did get to see Tom Hanks like parade up and down Disneyland as Walt yeah. Disney, <laughs> like, <laughs> and that was just beautiful. <laughs> right, man. Tom Hanks is awesome. Which yeah. Hooper saw something with Tom Hanks recently. Oh, I did. Um, yeah, so I watched Captain Phillips today. Oh, um, yeah, and. Um, so uh, we had, I had some time today, so I went over to Redbox and grabbed a copy of Captain Phillips, and um, it was uh, it was it was good. Um, I I um, I really uh, if, for people who don't know, I mean obviously the listeners would probably know, but Captain Phillips is based on a true story, and it's basically about this the captain of this freighter, uh, and in two thousand nine, in April two thousand nine, they got uh, hijacked or you know got boarded by um, Somali pirates. Mm. Um, and then after, uh, I'm, I'll spoil the movie because this happened in real life, and most people know how it ends. You know, after like Boiler a couple, alert. after like a couple days, um, you know, the Navy SEALs kill the pirates. Um, so, and, and Captain Phillips lives. So, but it's a really, it was a really cool story even before they made the movie out of it. Um, it was just one of those, um, just crazy. Like it, apparently, it was like the first, um, the first like U.S. freighter to be boarded by pirates in, like, 200 years mm. or something. So, like, yeah, it, it, it was kind of, like, a big deal. Um, and um, it's just another example of, you know, Navy SEALs basically coming in and just shooting people up and getting shit done, you know? Right, yeah. yeah, pretty much, just getting people out of tough situations. Um, yeah. So um, it was really good, directed by Paul Greengrass. Um, he's always been good at uh, shooting action. Paul Greengrass also directed another um, true story movie, um, United 93, which I have repeatedly said I'm a big fan of, um, mm-hmm. especially with um, unknown actors, you know, in those movies. Yeah. Just the way he shoots, it's just, it's, it's, I don't want to, I say uncinematic in a good way. Like, you just, mm. it doesn't play like there's a camera crew on a dolly shooting stuff. It just plays like you're a dude watching this, these, these you know, heart-pumping events happen before you. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so he's just really good at keeping you engaged and keeping tension up. And just, it takes them, like, they, they try to board the ship, like, three times, you know, and every single time we're like, because I always credit peop, um, filmmakers who take a story where you know how it ends. So you know that, yeah. you know that, it's not like the Captain Phillips turns on the hoses and they go away. Like they're going to get aboard the ship. You've seen it in the trailer, mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. when you can take a story where you know the outcome and make it still interesting, that gets points for me. Um, yeah. And uh, well, the movie's nothing if it's not tense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's, you have to do, especially if the outcome is known by the general public, you mm-hmm. have to make it tense because otherwise, you're not. It's not like you're counting on the ending to be a big surprise. Exactly. You know, it just has to be the, 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 you know, the joy of watching the film has to come from all the tension and the performances. Exactly. And Tom Hanks is really good, especially, especially yeah. at the end, you know, after they, you know, after they yeah. get him, get him out, which that scene, um, Dustin, I don't know if you know this, but with him and like the medical examiner, that was like, that was, a, you know, I, I, I kind of assumed this while I was watching it, but she was like a real, you know, she was real. Yeah. She was real. And that whole thing was improvised. They, yeah, they, they just told her, you know, go through your do normal, you yeah, checkup, and he'll, you know, he'll, he'll just, he'll, he'll act. act. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was great. Like, I almost, I almost cried at the end. Like, it was great. Dude, I got choked up too. I'm not going to lie. I mean, 
the the thing is, like when you go into it, you're wondering. At least for me, I was thinking, okay, this could very easily become Die Hard. You know, uh-huh. it's just a dude like sneaking through a, a boat, taking out pirates. But but at the same mm-hmm. time, um, you know, it, I mean, it it just takes the movie in a completely different direction than than anything that's in your head, and then um, you know, continually like stacks the cards against him. You know what I mean? It's it's just like a wave after wave after wave of of you know <laughs> just these terrible things that are happening to this guy. Yeah. And um just when you think like okay, that's it, you know, it's about to end. It's like, "Oh, no, here's another thing." Yeah. And and it, it's just awesome to kind of watch it unfold and and I think you're right. The end the ending scene at the uh, with the with the medical examiner is is um, is really moving because, you know, like I said, very easily the movie could have been Die Hard and it could have been okay. Uh, after after everything's over, he just kind of like shrugs it off and and moves on like John McClane. Yeah. But instead, they allow the the you know this this character to be human and to break down and to you know and and just to be believable in an action movie. And I think I think that's kind of strangely kind of daring these yeah. days to do something like that. And, you know, especially for Tom Hanks, who, I mean, we know he's a great actor. You know, how do you how do you balance the, like, the heroism of the character with his humanity? And I think Tom Hanks did it, you know, as good as it could be done. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a hard, a hard note for people to hit because... Because you want your character to be a hero, but you know how do you make them relatable? And um, I mean, that's what I love about someone like Indiana Jones, who who can take a punch. You know, it's I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But anyway, it's human. human <laughs> is. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It was. It was good. Um, so uh, I saw that. Um, um, I saw my wife and I did a double feature uh, the other night. So we watched The Conjuring. Um, oh. Let's talk guys... about The Conjuring. Have you seen this, Michael? Oh, and do I have some opinions? <laughs> well, I'd like, I'd like, to, I'd like to. Oh, here, I'll give you like a like a brief review. But I'd like to know. I'm more interested in your opinions um, than than my own review of this movie. Um, it was. Um, as far as like scare, I'm not like a big horror movie fan, and horror movies run a big spectrum. They run from like kind of like comedy horrors and like you know sort of like uh, sadistic, like you know crazy shock horror to to stories like The Conjuring, which are not they're not like they're basically stories of like demonic activity, which I find more interesting just because it, they they feel I don't know what I'm trying to say, not more grounded because that's really a matter of perspective but they just feel they feel well they're larger they're larger and they just they feel like i don't know they, uh, what am i trying to say just like when when the when the weird when the figure like walks out of the pond and the the creature from the black lagoon walks in your house and just starts eating your family i'm just like all right well this is you could have filmed that kind of scary but that doesn't really scare me um sure. I, I don't know what do you think michael i didn't think it was scary yeah, I didn't think it was, like, too terribly, like, thought, actually scary. I was waiting around for stuff to jump out at me. Yeah. And, and you know, so so on and so forth. Um, I just, you know, especially when, like, at one point, they're like, we're going to get the kids and we're going to go. And they were yeah. like, they were like, nope. <laughs> they, were like, <laughs> they were like, they were like, uh... Well, that won't do any good. And they were like, <laughs> I just, they were like salesmen. You know what I mean? They were like, no, he should stay here. <laughs> you know, he shouldn't even try to run. <laughs> I um, it, it pissed me off. It it, it upset me. I yeah. I'm much more into the like. I guess what scared me is the prospect of like being tormented by demons more than this movie itself with yeah. that context. Like, the, maybe that's. What what I I think I was I was prepared to be a lot more freaked out than I was, yeah. um, with it. Um, but that being yeah, said, I heard I it was like, really scary. 
I heard that too. I heard it was like super scary. But I, I, I mean, Melissa and I went and saw it in theaters, and then we've watched it on disc a couple of times. And I just I don't I don't get it, man. I yeah. the the advertising and the trailers and the media that they had for it was so phenomenal, and I thought it was going to be such a good picture. But mm. you know, I was real disappointed with it. Yeah. Yeah, but, hey, that's just one man's opinion. Sure. Well, we were we this next movie we got it because we were expecting to be super scared by it, so we wanted like a comedy to kind of liven it up, you know. Because um, sure. you know I'm a parent now, so I get a terrible sleep as it is. I don't need to be awake all night thinking about The Conjuring. Turns out <laughs> it wouldn't have been an issue, anyways. But nevertheless, uh, we watched The Internship with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. Oh my goodness. I, I thought know. you said you rented a, a, a comedy, a comedy. <laughs> not another, not another torturous another <laughs> misadventure. Uh, yeah, um, it was, um, and at this point I'm like, you know, two glasses of wine deep and I'm just another two hours more exhausted. So, um, I don't really have a great, um, version of how this, how entertaining this movie is. Um, I like watching Vince Vaughn, uh, and Owen Wilson interact um, that was that better than the That makes one of us. That makes one of us. Um, it, I don't know. Maybe uh, watching movies with, with, with Mrs. Hooper, like, skews my judgment, I guess, because, <laughs> because I walked away from it going, that was enjoyable, but maybe I just wanted to go to bed. So who knows? But I mean, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess I expected it to be super awful and it wasn't super awful. It was just kind of generic. Um, it's skippable, you know, nothing quotable, no one-liners. Um, I, I don't know. where they work at Google, correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I think I'd rather watch Jaden Smith rehearse (laughs) scenes from his next upcoming movie than, than rewatch the internship. And Jaden Smith is terrible. Um, This is true. You know, I I think that Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn have some really beautiful chemistry together. I think that when you put the two of them together, they're better than ten others. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And and I think that that movie had its moments. But at the same time, I I just... I I don't know who they were trying to appeal to. (laughs) Right. Was that movie movie, made for me? Or or was that movie made for 16-year-olds? Like, I just don't know. It's one of those movies where um, you set yourself up for a certain kind of disconnect because you because the premise of the movie is you know they are they're 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 salesmen and then their company basically goes under and so now they find them it, it's it's relatable for for like older people I guess today because people who have been in the same line of work for 20, 25 years and all of a sudden they're thrown out and forced to get you know, good jobs and compete with younger people who are, who are more... I don't know, the whole Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson, oh, well, we got to learn how to computer kind of thing. I right, mean, exactly. One That's fail. where, like, I expected, I expected if, if they wanted to go, if they wanted to be more believable, this would have been like a Morgan, this would have been another Morgan Freeman, Jack Nicholson buddy <laughs> flick, you know. Um, but, like... I, so I understand that thing they're trying to do, but then it's like when you make the whole movie like, oh, we don't understand memes or texting or, you know, just certain things. But then through our just through grit and our salesmanship, we can actually bridge the gap and be good enough for Google, you know, more than any of these other young, snappy, witty interns. Yeah. Um, like, so it, it, it had its moments. I mean, I'm not going to yeah, take that I mean, away from it. Yeah, it, it, it was harmless, but I, I didn't. Ex- I got about what I expected, just to sort of be passively entertained for a couple hours, you know. And um, yeah, I'm glad I got it at Redbox and didn't go see it. Oh, go see it in theaters. Did you drop your baby? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm oh God, nice. I did. Um, <laughs> No, I did not. I'm um, kidding. What's What's crazy is stuff like that doesn't even wake her up. She doesn't even jump when you drop like loud noise. Like I could just I could I could shoot a deer in my inside my house and she just wouldn't. That's wild. <laughs> Nothing, but when you walk through the house silently, then you know just all hell breaks loose. You know, yeah. guys, uh, if you'll give me forty five seconds, I gotta get another beer. Okay, gotcha. Bam! I'll be right back. All right. 
Did that movie with Vince Vaughn come out, The Delivery Man? The Delivery... Um, Is that I've, already out? It may be. I, I, I didn't notice. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one where he... Uh, He's like a sperm donor. Yeah, and he has like 500 kids. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got like, a, yeah, he's got a lot. He's got like 500 plus kids. That's ridiculous. Yeah, um, I, I didn't, I didn't see that one. I heard, I heard it was okay. Like, did you? Okay. It had like heart or something, but. I know Chris Pratt's in that. He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. So. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, um, maybe I'll check that out eventually. But there, there's a long list of movies that I will only watch with Mrs. Hooper. Like, that's the mm-hmm. only way that they'll ever <laughs> make it to my living room. Um, right. That's probably one of them. Like, it's yeah. basically a list of stuff that I could tolerate if I'm, if I'm watching it with her. Um, sure. And, and, and The Delivery Man is part of that list. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I actually have one more movie to add. I forgot to put it on the, the Google Doc. Um but I'm fulfilling my promise uh, that, that I teased last week. I also saw Don John. Oh, yeah. Uh, Michael, have you seen Don John? No, I haven't. My body, my work, my church, my family, my porn. <laughs> you saw that, y'all saw that trailer, right? Yeah. I'm not just... Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so... I didn't uh, know you were doing an impression at first. I thought you were just... Talking. Yeah. Why is he talking like that? Why is he talking um, about his body? I guess that that, that all, this all makes the theme... Well, no, it doesn't. It does kind of... Never mind. I was going to say the theme of all my movies this week seems to be, like, New Englander accents. But I don't know what mm. state The Conjuring takes place in, and the internship was in California, or wherever Google is, so that doesn't apply Seattle here. Seattle so. or something. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's even worse. All right, well, I don't know. It's the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> So, um, I saw Don John, and, um, um, so, uh, it stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, also written and directed by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, oh, put out by his, his okay. yeah, yeah, this is the one where he's, like, a Jersey guy. This and is he, the um, one where he made a movie so he could have sex with Scarlett Johansson. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and this really just shows that if you try hard enough for things like that, they will come true. <laughs> so, um, so get to writing, all you horny young bastards out there. There's <laughs> actresses out there waiting to be, pay, be paid by you to pretend to have sex with you. It's not even prostitution. It's worse. Hey, <laughs> take your top off. <laughs> um, please. Um, so the movie is basically just about this kind of, you know, he's not even like a muscle head. He's just, he's just a Jersey guy who's actually like an old fashioned gentleman, um, who's, you know, in, he's in good shape, he's clean, he's got his shit together, um, you know, he, he, he slams down lots of, uh, women, not like he doesn't hit them, like, he, he beds them, <laughs> he slams them down into his bed, he doesn't, he's not physically <laughs> yeah, abusive. I, I figured as much. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a really dark movie, it's about domestic <laughs> violence. <laughs> he's a gentleman, but he does beat up the women that he, that he likes. Yeah, yeah, afterwards he beats them and says, so please don't call me. Don't call me or the police <laughs> after this. <laughs> um, so anyway, he, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, it, it's basically, I guess you would say the, I read this somewhere. I wouldn't say this, but, um, the movie is basically about a guy like that. Oh, but he also, he does that, but he also like, he just prefers like, you know, porn. Uh, even, even as much as he gets laid, he still prefers just the, the, the porn above everything. Um, and it's really, it's not so much about porn, porn addiction at all. It's, it's cause the, the movie used to be called John, Don John's addiction and they changed mm-hmm. it to Don John cause Joseph Gordon-Levitt was afraid that it would focus too much on the issue of pornography rather than the, just the story itself, which is kind of about a guy who's, who the whole reason he's even sleeps with this many women or, you know, looks at porn this much is because he, he seeks you know, connection and intimacy in his life. And it's about his search for that. Um, so he meets Scarlett Johansson and, you know, she doesn't like him looking at the porn and stuff. And it's basically about how the character, you know, there's character growth through that. I don't want to spoil it. Um, you know, it's a good, it's a good film. I'm glad I watched it. Um, I thought it'd be better, but I don't know how, in what way I thought it would be better. Mm. You know, I don't know if I expected like, you know, more Scarlett Johansson or, 
funnier <laughs> jokes or a more profound, you know, um, uh, you know, storytelling. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was well, good. Well, let though. me ask you this: How does? I mean, we all know Joseph Gordon-Levitt's acting chops, but how is his writing and directing? Oh, I liked it. It's, it's it, it's one of those movies where um, it has a, I don't want to say a clear style, but it, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like, oh, this is what this film would, would be presented as if, if just, you know, Joe Schmo directed it. It, it looked mm-hmm. like it, he had a very clear way he wanted it to look and sound and be. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just, I, 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 I like how it's directed. It's just, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's quick, it's snappy, it, 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 it's paced really well. It's not slow, okay. it's it's tight, you know, it's it's like 90 minutes. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty short film. It's 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 concise. And gotcha. I don't know if, it, if that's just a young filmmaker thing. I don't know if it's a young, non-pretentious filmmaker thing to just, look, just <laughs> give them the story, you know, don't waste their time, and yeah. it'll be good. So I, I don't know. But it, it seems to sure. just be his aim to just tell a concise... Um, you know, good little story, and um, all the yeah, acting is really good. Him. Tony Danza plays his dad, um, mm. so it's it's fun to watch him just like just have anger issues and just yell at his son for the whole movie, basically. Yeah, which is right. even funnier because he they were in the Angels in the Outfield together, and uh, it's funny to oh, see man. To, go f- to go from that. Oh, you just blew my mind. I know. Yeah, when he was like twelve years old. Yeah. 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 You know, I don't think I don't think John John was one of. Joseph Gordon Levitt's first films he, he produced. Um, if I remember no. correctly, there was a picture called Hesher that he produced. Did you guys see that one? Did he produce oh, Hesher? Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he he helped produce that one. Wow. Yeah, I, I I think I think you're right. I think he did have more involvement than just acting. Yeah, and and I remember, I never saw it. I remember but... watching Hesher and saying, "Wow, Joseph Gordon Levitt is really he's he's on top of making these movies." Uh, Hesher was another. Very similar to Killer Joe. It was another black comedy. Uh, definitely mm-hmm. worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Hmm. Okay. Also interesting. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, so that's Don John. Um, well, I um, like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I think, I think yeah. he's, he's cool. It, it's one of those, it's especially, like, if you're a fan of his, then it's a, it's a must-see, I'd say. Um, I mean, he seems like a down-to-earth dude. It, it, yeah. I don't know. He, he seems like a regular guy. Pretentious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Oh yeah. I want to have a beer with him and Matthew McConaughey like at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That'd be a good yeah. time. Yeah. I got a movie. Did you guys talk about um, Ender's Game with Harrison Ford? I have not seen it. No, I haven't seen it either. Oh. That, but I'm interested. Okay, that is definitely something you guys got to check out. Um, okay. You know, I heard a lot of mixed reviews about Ender's Game, but it's a story mm-hmm. of a young man who becomes a leader, uh, who yeah. ends up, uh, well, I don't want to give it away, who, who ends up overcoming more than he thought he could with the encouragement of Harrison Ford and his family and other supporting characters. But it's definitely mm-hmm. worth a watch, Ender's Game. Um, it's beautiful. Awesome. It sounds great. Great performances all around, especially from children. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely worth it. Definitely worth a watch. Great. Okay. I I remember when that was coming out. I, I went to pick up the book, and um, so I went to the library, checked out the book. First time I've been to the library in probably like a decade. Oh wow! And and uh, and so I, I opened this book, and I think they've they've aged the characters up in the movie because I think in the book the main character was like six. Yeah, in the movie yeah. it's like twelve, fourteen, fifteen or so. And see, I feel like I'd like that a lot better because I couldn't finish the book because I just couldn't suspend my disbelief that a six-year-old yeah. was capable of doing these great things. Right. Because right. I'm like, I'm like, do you realize how young six is? Like, you can't like be a leader or think strategically when you're six. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you don't have so, the yeah, capacity no, I, to understand risk, reward, and consequences and things exactly. like that. Your brain's not not nearly fully developed enough for that. Yeah. As, uh, of course, I think I think they were trying to to postulate that in the future things like development of children would be a little different. Um, I don't I don't know how the movie is with that, but I think the book kind of set that up that that some some children kind of developed, you know, better than others. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, but I got about 
maybe like halfway through the book before I just was like, I, I just can't believe it anymore. So I returned it, but I, I do still intend on seeing the movie. Yeah. Just because like it, it was interesting. And since they aged the characters up, I feel like it'd be more believable. Speaking of age, Harrison mm. Ford does a great job, but that man looks like shit. <laughs> I know. It's so sad. <laughs> It's true. Have you seen him in 42? No, I haven't. Oh, man. He looks so old. I'm like, oh, uh, no. Indy. Yeah, right. Han, what? Are, where? No. Uh, 42, more like 92. Yeah. Nah. I know, for real. And, dude, he's going to do... Evidently, his plan was to, to come back to do the Star Wars movies that are that they're doing, but only if they can go ahead and green light two Indiana Jones movies. No. Because he wants no. to finish another trilogy. No. That was no. that was his stipulation. He was like, "I want to, do, I will do Star Wars, but I have to do two more indie movies." No. Yes. Absolutely not. It's 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 happening. I guarantee it. No. Two more. Shia LaBeouf will have no part of it, I'm sure, but they're gonna do it. Can we talk about Shia LaBeouf, please? Can we please talk about? Shia LaBeouf? We, we we can for like. We yes, have like two more we always have dinner. time to talk about Shia LaBeouf. Uh, on then I have to leave. He put a paper bag over his head, <laughs> and he said, "I am not famous anymore." So after he did that, he then rented out space in a gallery oh, man. I know. in California, where he cried in front of one-on-one -on -one patrons of the gallery. He they sat down at a table across from Shia LaBeouf. And he just sat there and cried. Yep. <laughs> and this is true. <laughs> this is so true. This is. So I've true. seen video of it. You can find it. Are you serious? You can go to YouTube. You can find where people bring in like cameras, and they'll talk to him because I think his goal is like, or what he does is he just sits on the other end of the table. He has earplugs in, so you know he can't hear you or whatever. He can probably hear you, but whatever. Um, so he, ha he has these earplugs in and it just sits there and cries as you talk to him. And, uh, yeah, you can find footage of it on YouTube. It's, it's crazy. Like, I think he's, I think he's le legitimately like insane now. I, I <laughs> Shia, what are you crying about? You became a millionaire overnight. Michael Bay made you famous and rich. Yep. What is I, your problem? We I think, uh, you did even Stevens. We know you did holes, but buddy, that is in your past. We're we're not judging you anymore for that. What is this man doing? Dude, I would go in there and I would just take a picture of Lewis Stevens. I'd be like, "You remember this kid? That's who you were, Shia." <laughs> then he'd really cry. <laughs> a rising young comedy star. I would, I would, I would just bring him in. I'd just bring him in and show him like the Rotten Tomato scores for Transformers movies. I think that's what made him cry in the first place. Like. I mean, have, have, have we Google searched him since this? Has there been any word from Shia since his I don't think latest so. publicity stuff? I don't know. I think he has a Twitter page. <laughs> uh, let me let me see if I can Google it. We're gonna we're gonna find. I, I'm looking up his Twitter now. Okay, cool. His last tweet was on February seventeenth. And he just posted a photo of himself crying. No, of the sky with words in the sky that says "Start creating." I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> Start creating shit. My personal <laughs> motto. <laughs> February 11th. Hashtag I am sorry. February. 9th. <laughs> <laughs> February 9th. <laughs> I am not famous anymore, and it says that every day. Every oh day, my God. going back to January thirteenth. Oh my gosh! What is what is? It's like a solid month of I'm not famous anymore. Oh Shia, my God! Can we write him a letter? Does anybody have a Twitter account? Yes, the Hoopercast has I a Twitter account. I do account. actually. Yeah, the Hoopercast. Can, can we write? Can we invite him to be on the Hoopercast next week? Oh, yes. Please. Can we? Let's can do we, it. Can we please send him an invitation. Please. You know what's weird? He might actually say yes. Yeah, I know. We, we got to <laughs> talk to him. Um, yeah. I, I do not you know he gets like Twitter probably account. 80 of these a day, right? Oh, I'm sure he does. I bet he gets just, you're fucking crazy, you stupid fucking idiot. 
in the post. <laughs> All he has to do is see one that says, you know what, you're brilliant, they don't understand you, we want you to come on our show so you can tell your side. And he'll be oh, like, damn. Send that. Send that. Do it. I'll just send him that already. I'll just I'll just put a I'll just uh, put a link to this episode on his uh, Twitter. No, <laughs> love the Hooper cast. You know what? A lot of people give Shia LaBeouf a lot of shit for Eagle Eye, mm. but I'm telling mm. you, Eagle Eye is one of the best bitches. <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't, even. <laughs> I can't even say it. Watching that movie is like falling down a flight of stairs. <laughs> it just doesn't end. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, man. All right, Michael, we will do this again. We will. Absolutely. I have a great time um, with you guys. All right, well, everybody. It's fun to have um, a third voice. Yes, yes. Um, Michael, thank you for coming on. Oh, uh, listeners, thank you for listening. Um, just uh, for, um, you know, tell your friends about the podcast. It is, um, you can listen to it at um, hoopercastpod.tumblr.com. Um, there's also, you know, we embed the link to the YouTube, um, page, um, tell your friends, spread the word. Uh, there is now a PayPal donate button on the Tumblr page if you want to leave us a virtual tip. Um, and it's just going to go to, you know, stuff like new mics, um, and, uh, you know, other, other things that we can do to make the show better. Um, you can find us on... Huh? Yeah, beer money. Because <laughs> that, that does make the show better. That gluten-free um, beer ain't cheap, guys. Yeah, I, I need to buy more of this. So. <laughs> anyway, um, you can also find us on Twitter at um, just at HooperCast. Um, and, uh, yeah, so thank you for listening, and um, we'll see you guys next week. Hey. Woo! All right. Goodbye, everyone.